So hi, so my name is Nicolas Vio. Uh, so I'd say I'm from Montreal because I've lived here most of my life, but I was actually born in Paris and I grew up there until I was 14 years old. And uh, I spent the, the last uh, 18 years of my life uh, in the Montreal area, let's say. Uh, so that's basically where I'm from. <laughs> I like to learn a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, I had, I'd say maybe um, interests that were a little bit uh, more serious uh, for my age, and one of them actually uh, I found out uh, maybe from the age of nine or ten was uh, languages. Uh, I started learning English at that age, and I basically I'm basically self-taught uh, in English. Uh, and then after that, uh, so it took me two three years to to get relatively fluent. Then I got to learn a little bit of German. That I got uh, interested in. Uh, and a bunch of other languages, but I, I guess the language, so I learned some Spanish uh, along the way, and now I'm fluent in Spanish. Um, but one of the, the key languages that made me, uh, uh, I guess, come later to the world of, uh, of polyglots is Esperanto. So the constructive language Esperanto, which I learned, I guess, in 2009. And that was, that learning the language was, uh, I guess, the product of two things. First of all, curiosity. Uh, the fact that I was, I was curious as to whether or not you could get fluent in a constructed language. It turns out you can, and I am. Uh, but also, I uh, was very interested in uh, everything that was related with, uh, or related to rather, uh, language and society and power and geopolitics, history. Got very interested in, uh, especially the state of the French language in North America and the situation of Quebec. And, uh, and as of course, Esperanto is, uh, among other things, uh, a tool to promote linguistic uh, equality or a level playing field uh, for people who speak different languages and to allow them to communicate. So that was one of the uh, secondary motivation. And uh, along the way, I met some really cool people, uh, just as cool as the ones uh, people will meet here uh, during Langfest. Actually, some of those people, some of those uh, Esperanto speakers who we're going to have a few uh, from Montreal and from elsewhere will will be present. Uh, oh, that got me. Uh, that that got my, my my whole language thing. I guess started because I started uh, going to Esperanto events and some of the large polyglot events, uh, in particular the polyglot gathering, was actually born out of the Esperanto world and was set up by uh, Esperantists. Uh, so that's how I knew of what was going on in that world as well, and that. I guess uh, let me uh, uh, I guess have a foot in, in both uh, communities now. So the way I got involved in Langfest uh, was I guess from the beginning. So the, some of the some people might know. Sorry, some people might know that the origins of Langfest are actually uh, an event that that took place in New York. That was the Polyglot Conference. The Poly Polyglot Conference is an event that is mostly in Europe, but it travels from country to country, city to city. And uh, in 2015, in October, it, it came to New York. And uh, I participated, several Montrealers, including uh, Joy and Tetsu, uh, the two co-founders of uh, Langfest, basically also participated. And several people, uh, including Joy, Tetsu, and other participants, uh, started thinking, well, you know, this event came once to North America, but why can't we have uh, an event that would come back uh, to, to, to the continent and be more accessible to people who lived in Canada and the US. And uh, I knew of the first Langfest, which was called NAPS, North American Polyglot Symposium. Uh, early in 2016, it was actually, uh, I was actually told by Lydia Machova, who is a uh, well-known polyglot uh, from Slovakia and who was one of the uh, co-organizers of uh, uh, the, the past two uh, polyglot gatherings. And uh, first of all, I was like, uh, how come uh, there's going to be a language event in Montreal and I don't even know about it? Uh, and then, uh, I guess probably a couple of weeks later, or a few weeks later, I, uh, I went to a, a small polyglot meetup. Uh, there were a couple of polyglot meetups going on in, in, in Montreal. And uh, I met with Joey, uh, Joey Perugino. And he was like, yeah, we're going to, to you know, 
have this event and basically we have no speakers, we have no volunteers, we have nothing. So I offered to uh, do a presentation on Esperanto. And uh, he was like, cool, yeah, let's do that. And you know, obviously, you know, if, you, uh, if you're ready to put a little bit of time in uh, anything related to event organization, especially as a volunteer, well, you, know, you, you put the finger in and then you know, the hand, the whole arm, and now you know, it's the whole body and even more. You know? <laughs> so uh, that's how I got involved in Langfest. So we did NAPS the first year. Uh, that was a success because uh, Tetsu and Joy managed to attract uh, some very well-known speakers, including uh, Benny Lewis, who's actually one of the first uh, uh, polyglot of the polyglot community that that I that I got to know, uh, uh, in part because he also speaks Esperanto. Uh, but also Steve Kaufman came and, and, and all those guys. And uh, and the following year, uh, when uh, after that first success, well, they decided to do another uh, another run. And uh, well, they uh, asked me to take care of, uh, among other things, of sponsorship. So uh, I did. It wasn't something I did before, but that's that's uh, we we managed to set up a second event, and uh, now I guess uh, yeah, we're all uh, a close knit team of uh, co-organizers who uh, have been running the event for now two years, it's the third time, and uh, we can hardly b believe we're still here and uh, actually making uh, Langfest uh, almost a, yeah, a, a staple in North America and certainly an event that's getting uh, you know, more and more known uh, in North America and the world. Uh, I went to the Poglad gathering for the past two years in uh, Bratislava in Slovakia and uh, people now know of Langfest. So, as I was saying, uh, I learned Esperanto for various reasons, curiosity, the fact that, you know, many claims were made about it, it's easy, it's, uh, it's neutral in the sense that uh, it doesn't belong to any particular nation or, or uh, you know, a group of people. Uh, it's, uh, so the neutral aspect was actually what, what drew me to, to Esperanto and curiosity about, you know, constructive languages. Um, what I what happened was that I learned it, uh, and I get I got a good passive knowledge in 2009 fairly quickly. But I really became active in 2013 uh, when I participated in my first large Esperanto event outside of Canada, and it was uh, an event called CES, the uh, Esperanto Summer School. Incidentally, that event is. Uh, organized by the organizing team that is now taking care of the Polyglot Gathering. Uh, a team based in Slovakia and headed by uh, Peter Balaj. And, uh, and that was a, sort of a revelation uh, for me because I got to meet so many people, a little bit like uh, people who go to their first Polyglot event. Uh, you know, it's uh, oftentimes a revelation. They, 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 you know, they, they can't believe that they're meeting so many people who share their interests and stuff like that. So for me, my first actual Polyglot event was the Polyglot Conference in New York, but it's, uh, the, uh, the atmosphere is uh, sort of reminiscent of uh, what you can experience in an Esperanto event. So in that sense, it wasn't uh, uh, really new uh, for me, but that's, that's how I got involved. And then after that, you know, it's uh, I guess a little bit of the same story. You know, you want to do something, you want to get involved. These are organizations that are all run by volunteers. You know, there's always work to do. Uh, so uh, I, I got on the board uh, of the uh, Quebec Esperanto Society, uh, which I now incidentally uh, preside, uh, and I, I have for the past year, and uh, it's been fun. It's been a lot of it's a lot of work as well. Uh, our big project right now is. Um, uh, that we're starting to plan the World Congress of Esperanto, which will take place in Montreal in 2020. So that's obviously uh, a very big uh, event. You know, we, we think we can draw more than uh, a thousand people. It's very hard to gauge, you know, two years in advance exactly how many people will come, but we think that's, uh, that's possible. And, and well, it's, uh, it really shows that Montreal is a hotspot for uh, events uh, such as these, you know, uh, so wh whether it be Esperanto or, you know, uh, languages in general, there's definitely something going on, but there's been something going on for, uh, I guess, you know, uh, several centuries now, you know, of, uh, of you know, people arguing over uh, cultural language and, and whatnot, so it's, uh, that's one of the reasons why Montreal is such a great place for uh, an event such as Langfest. My talk is, I guess, sort of related about uh, what I've been saying, you know, so, uh, 
uh, language and society. The title that, that I, I didn't really know which title to give it. Uh, the title is uh, uh, Langue et Rapport de Force, so Languages and uh, the Balance of Power. Uh, so it's going to be uh, uh, given in French. It's, uh, it's about how uh, at various levels, whether individual or I guess middle and you know, social, let's say you know, society level, and even at the geopolitical level, at the world level, uh, languages isn't something that uh, we can just have uh, fun with, uh, which of course we do here at Langfest, and it's great to, to do that, but it's also uh, something that uh, structures uh, a lot of what we do, uh, the relations between uh, people and between societies. I mean, it's one aspect, it's not the only aspect, but it's an aspect that is sometimes overlooked strangely, both by people who think about uh, power and wealth and that kind of thing outside of languages, and I feel to some extent also something that's uh, uh, not always thought about uh, by polyglots, or where um, the, uh, the ethos, if you will, is uh, more something like, oh, you know, uh, we're, we're all a, a great loving community uh, and we uh, love to learn uh, uh, so many languages, which of course we do. But uh, there's also, I guess you could call it a slightly darker side to it uh, that I think uh, is uh, important uh, to draw attention to. And actually, uh, w another of our uh, speakers is, uh, is also uh, very much uh, involved into that kind of, um, uh, of thinking and, uh, and, 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 uh, and topic in general. is Kai Chan, uh, who devised uh, what he called the uh, Power Language Index, and which he will present on Saturday uh, during th this Langfest. And uh, so he will also, uh, in a very, I guess, macro uh, perspective, talk about uh, which languages are, have the, hold the most weight and are the most influential and that kind of thing. And that's, uh, I think, one of the aspects that, uh, that we're bringing to this Langfest this year, trying to go broader and to try to involve uh, people who have an interest in language that is not necessarily only language learning. Uh, of course, we're always going to have language learning and a lot of people who have an interest in languages generally, even if it's not only language learning, do learn languages. But we have so many, so many, so many different speakers. You know, we have so yes, uh, language and geopolitics in that sense, and language and and society. Uh, we have uh, stuff about the brain and language learning, uh, interpreters and artificial intelligence. Uh, we even have uh, music and filmmaking. Uh, mu uh, yes, music and film making related to languages, uh, and even music and sports, uh, languages and sports. Uh, actually, probably with music, so it's, uh, uh, so we, 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 this Langfest is, I think, uh, the, the, the addition that's, that's really been the most, uh, or that's going to be, hasn't passed, uh, hasn't happened yet, is the addition that's going to be uh, the broadest in terms of the range of topics that we cover. I guess, you know, my, uh, language journey was mostly born out of a personal interest in the sense that uh, uh, you see two types of people, or two types more, but, uh, <laughs> but there's, uh, uh, you can see some people who have just been uh, brought up uh, in a very multilingual environment and they never really had to think about it much. It's just something that happened in their lives and they acquired, they happened to acquire uh, uh, a lot of languages uh, over the course of, uh, of whatever they were doing, you know, as a, as a child in school and, and work, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I have one native language. Uh, I discovered that I, I guess, sort of have either an interest, interest or a knack for languages or one was born out of the other. I don't know. At some point, uh, when I was relatively young, and uh, I guess now, uh, one of the things that languages do, apart from the fact that yes, uh, they help me at work, and for instance, I, I, uh, I use up to three languages at my day job, which has nothing to do with languages, uh, and uh, the fact that you know it's uh, obviously it's it's been it's been useful to to be fluent in four languages and and to know actually uh, uh, a couple more at intermediate level. 
but it's giving me a lot of work, I'd say, in my life right now because of my involvement in Langfest, my involvement in Esperanto. So one of the, the place of languages right now in my life is, apart from the fact that I'm trying to improve my German by watching TV shows and stuff like that, is mostly that it's giving me, I guess, yeah, a lot of work. And, but it's interesting, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting work. It's also you, very reward, rewarding work because you see the people who go to these events, you know, they're, they're often, you know, well, very enthusiastic about, uh, about them and about uh, the people that they meet. So that's, uh, that's, uh, that, that's one of the ways uh, you get paid back by all the work that you do. But I'd say, yeah, these days it's, uh, it, it's keeping me busy, but in a good way in a way that I think has uh, uh, enriched my life uh, a lot compared to, you know, if, if I were to not uh, be doing all that, all the work that we're doing right now. So yeah, so I, I, uh, I blog not very often. Uh, my blog is called Idee Multiple, so it's idemultiple.ca uh, without the accent on the E. And uh, the type of things that I blog about, are related to the talks that, uh, that I've given actually at Pog a lot of events. So uh, language and you know, power relations, uh, the status of French in North America and Quebec, uh, other unrelated uh, meditations at times. But <clears throat> most of the recent content has been uh, mostly uh, related to, uh, to, 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 to those topics and I hope that uh, if I have a little bit more time in the coming uh, months, I'll be able to publish a little bit more regularly and, uh, and hopefully think about uh, all of these issues uh, a little bit deeper. And hopefully this will give me also new ideas for talks and, uh, and uh, yeah, other things to, to talk about uh, during events uh, such as these. As, as I mentioned, there will be a, the World Esperanto Congress uh, of Esperanto, so the world, uh, yeah, that's the In 2020, the World Esperanto Congress will have will take place in in Montreal, and uh, it might very well be uh, because we have me and you know uh, several other people that are interested uh, that there might be some sort of cooperation uh, because a lot of Esperanto speakers are very interested in languages, and the reverse is also true. So uh, even that's something that uh, we can't really. Uh, talk about in detail right now because the details aren't there yet but uh, I think we will see uh, some kind of collaboration and by the way this I think is also something that's been um, one of the trademarks of Langfest over the past couple of years is that we're really about collaboration uh, with other events we've invited the organizers of the other main Proglot events uh, to Langfest for instance last year we had Lydia Machova we had uh, Richard Simcott, we had Alex Rawlings, they all came here uh, and uh, we've actually sponsored uh, the uh, Product Lab Gathering for the past two years. So we're really about uh, collaboration with other events, with other communities. I think that's one of the, uh, that's one of the things that, uh, that's part of, of Langfest's identity.